Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Summer Family Fun Series. My name is Lindsay Newton, and I'm so excited that you decided to join the Missouri Historical Society this morning. Thank you for being here. We're really excited that you're joining us virtually. Our museum isn't open yet, but it does open this weekend on June 20th. However, the History Clubhouse is still not going to open for a little while because we're making sure that everything is as safe as possible. So until then, this summer, we have a lot of things going on online, virtual programs. And you all are joining us today. We'd love for you to join us every Monday through all of June and July for Summer Family Fun Series. And we also have storytelling on Fridays. Um, to let you know, today is all about the Mississippi River. We have three museum educators leading our session today. Are you all here with me? We have Vanessa or Victoria, Danielle, and Emily. Say hello. And for the Summer Family Fun Series, we're using a hashtag. So if you try out any of the activities that Victoria and Emily and Danielle are doing with you today, you do them at home and wanna post pictures on any social media, you can use the hashtag clubhouse at our house. And I'm gonna write that in the chat box. And mention a couple other details. There's closed captioning today. If you want to read the words as we speak, you can turn on the closed caption button by scrolling to that button along your toolbar. And also this will be a roughly 45 minute workshop. And we're gonna ask you some questions and you can talk with us. And to do that, we're gonna use our chat box in the toolbar. So you can go to the chat box and when you type, it's going to be seen by me and Emily and Danielle and Victoria, but not everyone else, unless you want something to be seen. And we can maybe mention it to everyone. And also write your questions there, but just so you know, our educators might not be able to read along the whole time they're talking. So they're gonna be checking in once in a while in the chat, but they might not answer quite everything. And today's presentation is being recorded. So if you'd like to view it again or tell some friends about it to go look at it, it'll be posted on our Missouri Historical Society YouTube channel early next week. And lastly, your feedback is important to us. We would really appreciate if you could answer a few questions after the program. So a Kobo toolbox survey should open in another tab on your browser while we're here together. So keep an eye out for that when you leave the session. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you. If you are a Missouri Historical Society member, I know some of you are watching, we always appreciate your support. And if you aren't a member, consider joining. You can go to mohistory.org slash support. And I also want to sincerely thank our city and county residents for your tax contributions through the Zoom Museum Tax District. So let's do some learning about the Mississippi River. Victoria and Emily, take it away. Hi friends, we are here on the Mississippi River. And we're out on a steamboat on the river. We are so excited to see all of you guys. We've missed you so much. And we hope all of you all, our friends, will take a journey with us today down the Mississippi River. Yes. The Mississippi River meets the Missouri River just around St. Louis, and it flows all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and into the ocean. Steamboats used to go up and down the river taking this journey, just like we're taking the journey today. Yeah, steamboats were all over the Mississippi River. They could carry people like us We're on a trip today. They could carry people from one city to another city. Sometimes people would use steamboats to take trips across the U.S. So, steamboats also would carry goods. Yes, they would. But what kind of goods would steamboats carry? Hmm. Hmm. All kind of things, really, such as cotton. Cotton? Don't we still use cotton today? We sure do. Yeah, actually, I think that doll's dress is made out of cotton. 
I think my shirt is made out of cotton. I think mine is too. Wow. What else would the steamboats carry up and down the Mississippi River? They would carry other crops like coffee. Coffee. Hmm. Friends, do your parents drink coffee in the morning? I you bet they do. coffee in the morning? <laughs> I do drink coffee in the morning. Yes, I do. I personally like tea, but we're enjoying a nice cup of coffee as we look out the window. Look, it's another steamboat. Let's wave. Wow. I'm Hi. Hi. <laughs> I wonder where they're heading. Hmm. So sometimes when you're going up and down the Mississippi River on a steamboat, they play music too, right? Yeah. Hmm. All kinds of different music. Folk music, blues. Oh. Do you hear that? I hear. Can you hear them? Friends, can you hear the music that we're dancing to on the river? Can you all dance with us? Yes, join us at home, friends, and dance with us. That is so fun. You can Great job. And skip and skip and skip and skip and skip and skip and skip. Wow, that is so fun. I mean, this that we're listening to is folk music? Yeah. Okay. We use all different kind of instruments and different kind of voices as well. And a lot of different music originated on the Mississippi River on steamboats like the one we're on today. Wow, that is so creative. It is. Okay, I think we're going to talk about the boat and how it stays on top of the water. But wait, look! It's an otter! <laughs> oh, wow! Oh my goodness! An otter is one of the animals that lives along the ecosystem of the Mississippi River. Can you, can you all think of other animals you might see on the Mississippi River? Here's an otter that we have. This one familiar? lives right here in the clubhouse. You might have seen it when you visited us before. That's our otter friend. And what other animals live in the ecosystem of the Mississippi River? What do you think, friends? Hmm. I have an idea. What, Victoria? Can you all guess with us? I'll give you a hint, okay? Hmm. Is that a fish? You're right, it is a fish. There are so many different types of fish that live in the Mississippi River and swim upstream and downstream. Yes, one of our friends guessed a fish. Yes, you are right. You are correct, this is just one kind of fish out of the many, many different fish you can see in the Mississippi River. This fish is called a trout. Yes. And there are definitely a lot of fish trout fish in the Mississippi River. Can you guys pretend to swim with a fish? Or make a fish face? <laughs> and another animal that lives in the Mississippi River is, hmm, can we think what else might live out there along the riverbank? Hmm, there's so many. There are so many because the Mississippi River is so long. I'm thinking of an animal with a long, wide tail that flaps its tail on top of the water to make noise. It might kind of sound like a, hmm. What do we think, friends? Can we guess which animal that is? And they like to chew on wood as well. Hey, I think it's a beaver. 
You're right, Victoria. Our other animal friend is a beaver. Yes. And you're right, too. Some of our friends guessed beaver. Oh, yeah. And you they were right. On the ball. Awesome. <laughs> hey, I have a question. Yes? So, we're on a steamboat right now, right? We are on a steamboat. Yes, we are. But... Uh, Look at this, it's so heavy. How are we on top of the water? That's a great question. A boat is built to float on top of the water. Ah, mm -hmm. to float. Well, last summer it had a quarter and it was pretty small. So I thought it would float, but it actually sunk all the way to the bottom when I dropped it in, hmm. then I couldn't buy bubblegum anymore. Well, you're right. The boat is heavy and it floats, but the quarter was heavy and small and it sank right down to the bottom of the pool. Sink is another one of our words. Hmm. So things that are less dense, are up above the water and things that are more dense sink down below the surface. That's what your quarter did in a pool. It sunk down. Oh man, I really missed that quarter. <laughs> Maybe we should learn about what sinks and what floats. Yeah, how do we know? We could do an experiment Experiment. Friends, do we know what an experiment is? An experiment, you say. An experiment is a test where we do find out what can sink and what can float. So first we make a guess, a guess. of what we think will happen in our experiment. But that's a special kind of guess called a hypothesis. Whoa, a hypothesis? That's a big word, but it means the test that we do during our experiment is our hypothesis of what we think will happen. Like we know that the quarter will sink because really that was an experiment that you did when you tossed your quarter into the pool. Yeah, that was a sad experiment. <laughs> so let's take a journey and go do an experiment on what stinks and what floats. Yeah, I think that would be super fun. All right. Looks like we're in St. Louis now. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Is everyone ready? All of our friends? Yeah? All right, let's go! Oh, thanks, Victoria. Thanks, Emily. It was fun to be on the steamboat in the clubhouse with you all. So everybody watching, and Victoria and Emily and Danielle, they're getting ready to do a sink or float experiment with us. And we just learned what an experiment is and what a hypothesis is that guess about what you think will happen during the test or what we call the experiment. So they have some things that they're gonna try to put in the water and see if they sink or float. And we're all gonna guess which each thing, if it's gonna sink or float. So do you all know of some examples of things that will sink? What can you tell me? Can you think of anything you've ever thrown into the water, into a pool, into a river, into a lake, a pond, or even the bathtub. What sinks? What goes to the bottom? Tell me some things. Use the chat box and type them in. Mmm. Someone tells me that a crayon will sink to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Any other ideas of things you've put in the water that sink? Coins, 
Yeah, like Victoria said, she put a quarter in the pool and it sank all the way to the bottom. She lost her quarter, right? Coins are heavy and they're dense, even though they're really small and they'll sink. Rocks. Somebody says rocks will sink. Yeah. Okay. You guys have some ideas of things that would probably sink. What about things that you think might float? Can somebody tell me some things they think will float? Floating means they stay on top of the water. And it might be something that's lighter weight, or it's at least lighter than the water that's all around it. So it's gonna stay at the top instead of sinking to the bottom. Ooh, somebody tells me Legos float. Does that mean you put Legos in the bathtub? Legos might float. Oh, leaves will float. That's a good one. So sometimes when I'm walking in the park in the fall, I walk past a pond and I see leaves floating in the pond. Yeah. Sponges might float. Good. Cool. Hmm. Well, I think Victoria and Emily and Danielle are almost ready. And they're gonna have some items ready for us to try putting one by one into the water to see what happens. Now, this is something you can do at home if you wanna set up a bowl of water and work with the grown-ups to find some things around the house that are okay to put in the water. Don't put anything in the water unless you're sure it's okay. But then once you have a few things you can experiment with, you can try it out on your own at home. Oh, someone else tells me that a beach ball will float. A boat will float, a flip-flop will float, headbands will float. That's a lot of stuff you think will float. All right, here they are. Woo! Hey, everyone, we're back. Look, we made it to St. Louis. Yes, we are in St. Louis now. We're at the dock where all of the other steamboats are. Aren't there so many? Can you count with us? Can you all see them? One, two, three, four steamboats. So right now, we are right by one of the biggest buildings in St. Louis. Can you guys guess? I'm gonna give you a hint. You all make this shape too? It's the arch. We're right by the arch on the Mississippi River. And look, look at this giant bridge that our friends are sitting under. Wow, isn't it huge? It goes all the way across the Mississippi River and this is one wide river. It's called the Eads Bridge and it was built over 150 years ago. That's a big number, isn't it? One, five, zero, 150. And this is the first bridge that went across the Mississippi River. That is so interesting, Victoria. Thank you for sharing that with all of our friends today. I have one more fun thing for you guys. Look at this. This is my toy boat. Wow. <laughs> Isn't it huge? Is that a steamboat too? It is a steamboat. Look, can you all see the paddle wheel? This turns in the water, and this is what pushes the steamboat forward. Isn't that pretty cool? This is how steamboats work. And this says Mississippi. Just like the Mississippi River. Yeah. This is my favorite toy, but I can't really play with it because it's so old and fragile. So I like to keep it in my bedroom. So I'll put this over here. I bet you there was a lot of experiments when they were making the bridge. I bet so. They had to test out what would work for building the bridge and what would not work. So we're over here to do our own experiment with you, friends. All right. So what were those words again? We're going to find out what floats and what sinks. 
And we have a tub of water right here with us that we're going to do our experiment in. And like Lindsay said, you could do this at home with an adult who can help you be safe about it. That would be so fun to try. You can always use your bathtub instead of our little box here, but you can use whatever you like. So what do we have with us today? I know a lot of friends guessed what items they thought would sink or float, but what do we have today, Danielle? So we have a few things that we picked up from our houses and from outside. One of them is a rock. Wow, so, can you show our friends? Can you see a rock right here? The rock. That just looks like something you would find playing outside. Mm -hmm. And we can experiment with that. Yeah. So we can hypothesize that it will sink. I think it'll sink. I think so too, because Victoria said that her quarter sank. Mm -hmm. And it seems kind of like that. It's small and it has flat sides. And so a little heavy. I agree with your hypothesis, but we want to know what our friends think too. Can you tell us in the chat box? So many friends are giving us awesome guesses for our hypothesis. Will it flow or sink? Someone says sink. Sink. Okay. It might be time to try our first experiment. Oh, someone See. says float. Float. Okay. And we drop it in the water. It sunk. Did we see how that sank right down into the water? Just like the quarter did Ooh. in the pool. All right. Now I have some items that I brought and they were just in the bathroom at home. Just like we were saying about things that were up and down the Mississippi River, we have cotton balls. Just regular, fluffy cotton balls. Hmm. Now they're small items too. So maybe, I don't know. They're very lightweight, fluffy cotton balls. So it seems like they would float. I think since my t-shirt I dropped it in the pool sometimes by accident and it floats. So I think since cotton is my t-shirt, mm -hmm. it'll float. I think so. What do we think, friends? Tell us again in the chat box if we think the cotton balls oops, will sink or float. Ooh, someone says float. Float, okay. Some of our friends also think that the cotton balls will float. Oh, we're getting a lot of float. A lot of float guesses. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put the cotton balls into the water and we will see. Oh, wow. Do we Do you see it? They. What did they do, friends? What did these cotton balls do when we put them in the water? That's kind of confusing because some of them got wet and got heavier and sank right down into the water. But here's this one, and I guess it's not wet yet. So it floated. That is so interesting. Yes. So if it stays dry, then it floats because it's not as heavy. Hmm. What else do you have, or Danielle? What else? So, doing my walk outside, I was playing outside and I found something. Well, my dog found something. And this is his favorite toy, okay? What do dogs find outside sometimes? What do they love to carry around? Yes. It's a stick. It's a stick. A stick. Hmm. Now, do you think 
this will float or sink. Now it's long and thin mm -hmm. and it's kind of light. Hmm. Ooh, we're getting some floats. You see it? See, it's long and thin, a little light. Okay, lots of floats. Oh, I can't wait to find out if it sinks or floats. Let's try it. Okay, okay, ready? Oh, it's a little bit hard to see, friend. You don't see it, but it's right here. What happens if you push it down? Will it sink if you push it down? I'm pushing it into the water. Do we see the stick? It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here. And it floats. It floats right back up to the top. Maybe that's why boats were made out of wood. Mm -hmm. Because we know from our experiment that wood floats, sticks float. Mm, our friends are talking with us. Thank you, friends. All right. The next item I have um, is another item that I found in the bathroom at home. This is just a bar of soap. There we go. It looks a little like a Lego. It does look a little like a Lego. Hmm. So we are going to hypothesize again. A bar of soap. Do we think that this will sink or float in our experiment? What do you think, Danielle? I think, I think it'll float. Someone says sink. We have to sink. sink. It might sink too. This is a hard one. This is. That's the neat part about doing an experiment. Sometimes you don't know the answer, so you have to do a test to find out. Sink, float. Mm. Okay, so we don't know if it's gonna sink or float. I'm gonna put it in the water. <gasps> Did we see it float right down? Let's watch again. Or sink right down into the water. Hmm. Ooh. That's why floats are made of soap. That's <laughs> a good point. So if we're in the bathtub and we have a bar of soap, it would just sink to the bottom of the bathtub. And we know that from our experiment. Hmm. So what else can we put in there? Hey, wait. I remember one time I was in the bathtub and my soap, it floated on top of the water. Oh. But only one kind of soap. I've ever used floated. That's interesting. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Mm. What kind of soap was that that floated in the bathtub? Mm, I think it was, what is it? Ivory or something like that. Ivory. Wow. That could be an interesting experiment to do at home. Mm -hmm. Different kinds of soap. Wow, that's tricky. Did you find anything else on your nature wall? I did. I found something. So, I think it's so big. It couldn't even fit in my dog's mouth when he tried to grab it. Can you guess what it is? Oh, wow, what else would you find outside? You found a rock mm -hmm. and you found a stick. Hmm, what is it? It's a pine cone. Wow, that is a big pine cone. Can you show our friends closer? Wow. You see the pine cone? Ooh. Ooh. I wonder if this is going to float or sink. Hmm. I don't know. A pine cone comes from a tree, so Maybe it's like the stick and it would float. It does feel kind of heavy though. Oh. Heavier than the stick. Hmm. What do we think, friends? What is our hypothesis for what the pine cone will do when we put it in the water? 
I'm seeing some sinks, maybe a flow. Oh, some people, it's half and half. Oh. Sinks, half people say sink, half of the people say flow. Well, let's find out. I'm excited to see if you read sinks or flows. I'm excited to see too, because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> let's put it in this way. Okay, ready? Oh, whoa! Hmm, do we see it? Can we see it? On top of the water, which means that it is floats. You can, you can get, you can make a whole boat of pine cones to try to get on it. That's another experiment. <laughs> that would be a big experiment. <laughs> So there was one more item that I found around the house, and I thought it would be good to build a boat with too. So this was just something that I found in my kitchen. So I'm gonna show our friends. These are just some corks that I found in my kitchen. Hmm, I think they're made from trees too. And I thought that I could try and use them to make my own boat. Oh, that sounds like a fun idea. But first, we need to find out if they sink or if they float. What do we think, friends, about the corks that I found in my kitchen? Do we think that these will float or sink? Mm, we have some floats. They seem kind of light. They are, that's a good point. These are very lightweight. They're not heavy. But the cotton balls were very light mm -hmm. and they sank. What are our friends guessing? Lots of floats. All yeah. right, let's do our experiment and see. Oh. oh, it looks like they're all floating on top of the water. They did not sink down. Can we see them on the surface floating on the water? They must not absorb the water like the cotton did. So they are floating on top. That is such a fun experiment we just did. That was so fun. And thank you, friends, for guessing along with us and making that hypothesis with each different item that we put into the water. Now we have another great idea, okay? So, we made our own boats. Yes, we did. Out of items that we found around the house. So we have some ideas for what you could use at home to build your own boat and see if it sinks or floats. Danielle, did you build a boat? Yes, I built a boat. And I built my boat out of paper. Wow. Did you fold the paper in a special way? I folded the paper in a special way to where it looks like a boat. You see? That is boat? so neat. It almost looks like a little hat, too. It can also be a hat, yes. Wow, now she looks like a sailor. Okay, I'm so excited. So Danielle made her boat out of paper. Friends, do we think that the boat will float? Or do we think that the boat will sink? I thought it would float because it's made out of paper. And paper is light. It hmm. is lightweight. And she folded it in such a creative way. What do we think? Getting floats. Ah, our friends think it's gonna float. I'm thinking it might sink because it's just paper. I don't know. I'm so curious to see. 
Well then, you ready? You ready to try our experiment? I'm ready. Okay, okay friends. Ready. Let's see. And, oh. ah. wow, it floats. It is floating on top of the water. You did an awesome job building that boat. Thank you. And you can build a boat at home too with paper. Mm -hmm. What else could you build a boat out of? You can build a boat, I think, out of any of the stuff we found. Okay. So I had some materials in my kitchen again. This is kind of like Danielle's mm -hmm. because it's shaped out of cardboard, kind of like the paper boat that she made. And I also found these styrofoam trays. So we bought some vegetables and they came on these little trays. So these are some ideas, but there are so many things that you could try to build a boat out of because that's the fun of an experiment. You can try whatever is safe and whatever's around the house. So I made a boat that looks like this and I labeled it barge. So it's a styrofoam tray with corks from my kitchen. And it's like the barges that go up and down the Mississippi River. So, do you think it will sink or float? I hope, I hope it floats because it's such a pretty boat. Thank you. It is kind of heavy, actually. It's not that lightweight, but I know that it's waterproof, so I think that will help. I want to know what our friends think, though. Is my barge that I built going to float or sink when I put it in the water? I'm going to hope that it floats. We have some floats. OK, our friends hypothesize that it's going to float. Wow! Oh, wow! So Danielle's boat is still floating, and now my barge is floating along with it. They're having a boat party. That is so fun! They should listen to some of that music that we played earlier, that folk music or jazz or blues. And that's something you could do at home too. Find those music genres and play them and have a little boat party. Yeah, when you're taking a bath, you can bring your boat with you, listen to the music and dance around if you want. That sounds like fun. All right, well friends, thank you for joining us. So we've had so much fun with you all here today. And please make sure you put your name in the chat box if you want us to say hi to you. We see our friends, Toby. Hi, Toby, thanks for joining us. And Ellie, and who else is here? And Jack. Hi, Dad. Hi. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you had so much fun with us. And Charlie and Alex, thank you guys. Oh, yeah, double waves. Double waves everywhere. We miss you all so much. And Ayana, Anya, thank you all so much. We do miss our friends. We do. We miss you so much. And we hope you had fun today. Thank you for joining us here in the History Clubhouse. We hope to see you soon once we open up. And next week for our next summer family fun time. Yes. And we have story time on Friday as well. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Danielle. It was so much fun to do the Mississippi River activities with you this morning. I hope everyone watching today have fun too. I know I did while I was watching at home. Thank you for tuning in.
if you want to tell us in the chat box before you leave, what was your favorite thing today that helps us get ideas for what you'd like to see in the upcoming classes? And we would love for you to join us every Monday now through the end of July. So remember to tune in at 10.30 on Monday mornings and Fridays for storytelling at 10.30. Cuentos, our storytelling in Spanish, is every second and fourth Friday of the month at 11 o'clock on Fridays. Um, these activities are so much fun. Next week, there's going to be more Mississippi River fun on Monday morning. It's exploring the Mississippi River and it offers more river inspired activities that are designed for kids in second through sixth grade. So if you have that age level and you want to tune in or tell your friends, and again, you'll be able to see this session again on YouTube soon. And remember, we would love for you to tell us what you think about the program today so that Kobo Toolbox would have opened on another tab if you have a moment after you leave to fill out a few questions. It really helps us. So thank you again for joining us this morning. See you next time.